the paper folding exercise, we're going to do a, a Renaissance book grid construction, and we're going to do that by folding uh, paper. So um, I'll do this with you as you start, and I'll go around and help you. But what we're going to do is take these steps of folding the sheet that you have, which will be 11 by 17, and um, and we'll just determine essentially this area, which is where the text in a classic, classically designed book uh, would go with fairly wide margins, and the margins would be all different. Uh, typically, the inner margin is half the uh, outer margin. So if this is one, uh, this is two, and I forget what this is, but anyway, it's, it's also double. This is half of that. Okay. There are some interesting properties about this design. Um, it's all divided into sixths, so into ninths, rather. So if that's nine units, uh, I believe that's six units, that's one, and that's three units, and the same this way. And also, once you're done, the printed area is about half, uh, half of the complete white area. Uh, and there's many different designs, but let me just review. So first we'll fold it in half, then we'll do two, the two big diagonals, and it's going to be a little tricky for you with the large sheet, so try, I'll come around and show you how to do it exactly, I'll try to show you in the video. Uh, then, let's see, two, three, then four and five are going to be the diagonals of the small, of the single pages. Four, five, okay, so where, where four and five meet the large diagonals right here, we bring up a vertical line that will hit the top edge, and from there, we connect that point to this crossing here. Okay, where it crosses this other diagonal, that's our starting point to make our grid. Because at that point, we start there, we fold the paper, and where it hits this other diagonal, we fold again. Where it meets this other diagonal, we fold again. And then from here, you can go down. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly do it with my piece of paper which is brown because I wanted to make sure you could see and not washed out. Uh, it is a little stiffer so I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time uh, but let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, if you have your phone or your computer that pattern is in iLearn so you can, uh, you can review it there as well and I'll put it up again as soon as I'm done. But, uh, so the first fold of course it's fairly easy because you're just lining up the corners right? By the way I recommend you guys getting a, a thing called a bone folder, which is a tool that's for book binding, for making books. Uh, it's really useful for anything to do with paper, folding paper, making books, any kind of uh, craft involving paper. It's fantastic. It's actually a, a physical bone, you know, made, I mean, it's carved out of a, probably from a cow bone. And it's great because you can fold, instead of using your, your thumb, you can just use this. Um, and it makes a really nice, really nice fold. Um, uh, especially since now I have really thick paper, it's really, really helpful. Okay, so that's the third fold down the middle. And now I'm going to do the big diagonals. Now the big diagonals are going to be tricky because you're not going to have any reference point except the two corners. Okay? Uh, the reason for that is it's not a square anymore. So when you fold it, Boy, I got myself into trouble here by picking this really hard paper. Um, so now what will happen is that as soon as you make a fold here, you'll go to the other end and it'll be like messed up, right? It won't match. So the trick is not to commit yourself to the final fold until you know that you're actually in pretty good shape in terms of where it is. And the way to do that at least that's the way I figured it out, is I hold the paper with the back of my hand, and with the same hand, I push and pull the top, and I, and I do a few trials and errors, okay? I just go like that, 
I check the other side, I go like this, and then when I'm about sure that it's going to be right, that's when I fold it. Okay, so now, see what I'm doing now, you can see it's a little bit off here. Uh, so I, I pull a little bit more with my hand. But if I don't hold it also at the same time, it just doesn't work. So I know it's going to be tricky because that's a large sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm just going to go and do it. Because uh, once you fold it, it's really hard to unfold it, meaning it's really hard to do a new fold next to it. So once again, it's still like a little bit, uh, I mean, you know, it's really minuscule, the difference, but I can still fix that by, again, uh, pulling the paper uh, towards me, I mean, towards the middle and holding it. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, I mean, of course, if you've ever done origami, have a little more practice but okay so that's the first large diagonal now I'm gonna do the big the other big diagonal um, you know we could have done this simply by drawing those diagonals but I I think that paper is really in a way kind of a neglected Material, you know, people just think of it. Oh, it's a it's a sheet of you know paper with two I mean two sides, nothing to it. But in fact, it really is kind of almost alive. It actually has water in it, right? A certain amount of humidity in it still, um, and it has also a grain, which I'll show later. Um, so I'm having a hard time, but there. Now, the other thing, too, is that your sheet may not be perfectly square, meaning, you know, the dimensions may not be quite right. Uh, I got a pretty good fold in the middle of there, but it's not really perfect. Uh, so, which is to say, never trust things to be what they seem, because they can always be different. All right. So I've got the big diagonals, and I've got the median. Uh, let me mark those. So that's my number one. Uh, these are two and three. And now I'm going to do four and five, which is the diagonal of the uh, uh, half spread, right? And it's a little bit easier because you have a shorter distance. And, you know, if you get all messed up, you can always start a new one. Trying to take shape. Now I do my other diagonal. This point right here, right, which is the crossing of the half diagonal, let's call it, and the big diagonal, right? That diagonal and this diagonal. So now to bring the line straight up, I do a straight fold using the edges as my guide right there. I don't, I mean, I can fold it all the way back. I don't really need to, because all I need is really um, finding that spot at the top, right there. And once I find that, now I'm going to connect. That point to this point. I know it's frustrating because it's a large piece of paper. Um, so let me do that. Move off. And 
a moment, I'll show you this crazy origami that my son did some years ago, and it'll feel much better, actually, um, for the frustration and the difficulty. Um, okay, so that's it. So now I found that spot right there, and that's my uh, beginning point. Okay, so now I'm going to move that way and this way to find the rest of the the rest of the construction. This paper is great to show the lines. It's really not so great to fold. Once you've found that spot right there, it's all a bunch of straight lines. And here at the bottom, so let's mark those. That's one. The other one is down below here. Not the long diagonal, but the short diagonal, where it crosses the short diagonal. Right there. Uh, let's see, six or seven, seven. Okay, so that's six right here, right? And then seven is this one. So this part. Did you get that? That's determined by the half diagonal, which is you know the diagonal of, of only half of the spread, or the diagonal of the single page, and the very large diagonal, right? So that's one big diagonal. That's a small diagonal. So once I get that spot, I bring it up by folding the paper, you know, with a 90 degree fold. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, you have it. So now that you have that, you still need to find this point right here, and that one is but is is determined by connecting. So you have to do both diagonals, both small diagonals, this one and this one, and of course the very large ones to get both these points, right? So let me just highlight that. Okay, so from there to this point gives you this other crossing, and that's your starting point. Uh, in a second, I'll put the, uh, let, let's put it up for a second, again. Okay, so small diagonals, long diagonals, where they cross at one side only, just bring it up where it meets the top, connect to the other crossing here. And with these two lines cross, that's your starting point then to do the other folds. Essentially the the straight folds, these are just straight folds for the for the block of text, right? That's really simple. You just fold the paper using the edges as your guide. Uh, but that's what you need to find. Okay, so let me let me just finish mine and then I'll I'll go around. Um, because I've had really a tough time folding this paper. But, but it's pretty good. Okay, so that's now my... Um, and if you want, in your final, you can highlight the boxes by just drawing. For a second, I just want to show you this little uh, origami thing. Um, so these are all um, done folding one 
one piece of uh, square paper. Uh, the way it's done is that, well, my son did them from patterns from uh, origami books, and you pre-crease the paper to get all these pretty uh, complicated uh, constructions. There's like a whole science of origami. Uh, that is, there are people who have actually devised computer programs to determine how you can fold a certain piece of paper and, um, and what's possible and what's not possible. So I actually have another version of this that shows kind of the flattened out version. Um, but it's, it's really pretty amazing what you can actually do. All right. So paper is a pretty amazing thing. Uh, the thing about origami is a little bit like the paper airplane is that you can actually design something and then your design is actually the thing itself, right? It's almost like a blueprint that becomes the object because if you saw this all folded out, it really is a bunch of lines and that, that turns into the product. Uh, there is a thing in, in, in automobiles, the airbag is literally um, a, a paper, you know, a, paper, a surface that's been uh, folded up into thousands of little triangles and then it gets all folded back you know, into a very small space and when it explodes, when it releases, you know, this bag gets filled with air and then you know, the surface essentially becomes uh, like the unfolded origami. So this is like the equivalent of your airbag when it's now you know, compacted. Um, there's also other fun things about paper that you can, for example, uh, and I'll put a link to this MIT guy who is really amazing, who does these studies. You can take a piece of paper, fold it all up. I'm not going to do this now properly. But you fold it all up in a bunch of folds. And then you can do one straight cut, right, with, a, with scissors and you can cut any shape you want, like that. So you can plan for a particular shape, say an animal, to be cut out of the piece of paper with one single straight cut. And this guy actually proved that that's as possible for any shape, for any polygon. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the um, pattern back on and then I'll come around and help you uh, fold it.